When you start your own web explorations, probably the most useful tool out there is the developer extensions that are built into a lot of today's browsers. These are just super, super powerful tools and they're super useful. So before we go much farther, I want to, I want to introduce you to these and just show you how to use them. Uh, just get you started because there's so much information here I could go on for hours, but let's just uh, get, sort of show how to open them and some of the information that they're displaying. So I'm going to go over here. This is my group's web page. Um, the easiest way to open the Chrome, I'm going to talk about the Chrome developer extensions. Other browsers, Safari, Firefox, Internet Explorer, they all have their own versions of this, but in the sake, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to talk about the ones for Chrome. Uh, Chrome is the browser I use, and, and so those are the ones I'm familiar with. So let's show you how to get them open. So the first thing you want to do is, is pretty much if you click anywhere in the page, uh, on any page element, and right click, there's a menu here that's going to open up. Let me zoom in, and there's an option here, Inspect. So you want to hit inspect, and then what's happened here, let me zoom out again, um, is that, oh, I have a few things turned on, I don't want to, okay. Um, so what's happened here is that I have this new menu down at the bottom, okay? And this menu has a bunch of different uh, elements to it. The one I'm in right now, let me show you over here, is called Elements. And what Elements is showing me is it's showing me a um, that is showing me the DOM, it's showing me the pages document object model that's been built from the source. But what's interesting is um, if, if you click, you can also click view source. So here's something else I can do. I can click view page source. That happens in another window. And then I have over here, I have the source of the page. And a lot of this is being generated by page speed. So forgive me for that. Um, but you know, the source will show me the source that came down in the page. The difference here is that the element, um, the elements, uh, tab down here will actually be updated as the DOM changes. So if there's JavaScript that runs on the page, for example, that's updating the page's structure, this will be updated. The page source just shows you what you got from the web server. It doesn't show you any of the changes that have been made by JavaScript that ran on the page or for, for other reasons. So this is what's really interesting about this. I've got a console over here. Now this console is uh, allows me to run JavaScript in the context of the page. So uh, I'm using jQuery. Uh, so I can see that the jQuery library has been located. It's, it's showing me this is a typical uh, variable that jQuery is located under. And if I wanted to poke around and run JavaScript in the context of the page, I can do this from this console. This console will also show me any errors the page generated, um, output messages, you know, various types of information as, as we're going along. There's a sources tab over here. Uh, the sources shows me uh, where things uh, came from. It doesn't look like this has been updated, so let me hit refresh. Ooh, that's interesting. Oh, am I back on the Google page? Oh, whoops, I'm in a Google tab again. Okay, let me go back. Oop. Uh, go back to blue. Uh, click inspect. Um, and now, okay, here we go. So zoom in. And here's the sources tab. So the sources is showing me where things came from. Um, and what you can see here is that most of the content for this site came from my web server, blue.csc.buffalo.edu. Um, it show, just shows you very various things. So there's a CSS that came down. There's some images. Um, these names have been modified by page speed. But here's the image of my group uh, that's sort of in the middle of the page. There's also another picture of, the, of our lab. Um, so this is a good way to poke around the various components of the page. And it shows you kind of where those things came from on the server. Um, you can also see down here, I have no idea what this no domain thing is. That's interesting. Let's leave that alone. Um, but this is also, uh, it also retrieves some information from Google Analytics. So this is uh, something that we use to track visitors to our website. Okay, now the network tab typically will only show you information while it's open. So you see that there's no information here, but if I reload the page, then it shows me all of the uh, parts of the page that were loaded sort of in order um, and, where, and where they came from. So uh, this is the, you know, my, my logo. Uh, here's pictures that were on the page. Again, this is the same thing. And, and, and there's lots of information here if you click around the headers tab and other, and other fields. Let me, uh, let me make this a little bit bigger here. There we go. Okay, you can't see much of the page now, but this is, you know, highlighting the inter interesting and really useful information that the Chrome developer tools are showing you. 
The timeline uh, uh, tool is really interesting. And this is another place where, as you can see, um, I have to uh, look at things. So this is only tracking while this is open. So if I want to uh, put together a timeline of the page being rendered, I have to hit Control R. So let's uh, do that. Um, now it's recording that the page is being loaded. Um, and, and this is, again, I mean, I can't go into very much detail here, but this is super interesting. So this will show you exactly how much time the browser spent doing various things that were required to, to, to load the page. So for example, this says that, you know, I, I spent 21 milliseconds loading content. Um, there was about 250 milliseconds required to, to run some scripts, uh, 40 milliseconds to render content, take the HTML and transform it into the the pixels that you see on the screen, et cetera, et cetera. And, and there's, some, there's also a nice uh, visualization here uh, showing kind of like well, what happened when and things like that. So this is super, super interesting. There's so much data here, again, just sort of like play around, dig in, and see what you can find. OK. Um, Profiles gives you different ways to record inf things. Uh, sort of, we're getting less and less interesting as we go over here. Um, application uh, shows you information about some of the um, the JavaScript that's running on the page. Uh, there's a security tab, so this gives me more information. This page is secure. It's a valid HTTPS site, um, and there's information about the the connection and various things. Uh, I don't know exactly what audits are, uh, which is kind of interesting. I've never used this tab before, and then I'm not sure exactly why there's an Adblock Plus uh, element here, but this probably has something to do with the Adblock extension that I've installed in my browser. So, so overall, this is a really, I mean, obviously, even I don't know everything that it does, but this is by far the single most useful, powerful, and awesome tool that you can use to find out more about websites, web pages, uh, what things are doing. So for example, if I go to a site like Gmail and, and keep this open, I'll see various requests that are being made in the background by JavaScript. Um, you go to different websites, you can see them throwing all sorts of errors, things are going wrong, ads are coming in, blah, 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 blah. So this is really, really interesting. I would encourage you, go to some sites that you like, open this console, poke around, watch, load them, watch what some of the bottlenecks are. Um, you can learn a lot about how the web works just by using the simple tool that's built into all modern web browsers. Really, really exciting stuff.